Hi guys, it's uh, day 16. Um, there's a couple of little things I want to talk about first before we go out and have a look in the poly tunnel. Um, we have been having like continual power outs here, particularly um, in the, the studio, the office, and my brother's cabin and the poly tunnel. Uh, that seems to be caused by the main RCD which uh, supplies all of those um, and if I, if I can stick a diagram on the screen I will um, basically what happens is every t not every time, intermittently, sometimes when you turn something on or off um, the, the RCD fl switches and, and turns everything off um, so we put that, that's been ongoing for months now and it happens but the, the last uh, the last couple of days it's been like happening all the time um, so if anyone has any ideas about what that could be or what you'd look for um, we replaced the RCD yesterday with uh, 100 amp uh, 30 milliamp replacement the original one was probably about 15 or 20 years old so we've just done a straight replacement of that that seems as sensitive if not more sensitive um, so we're finding um, when we turn on the, or like say you, you turn on the computers um, in the in the studio or in my office, it flips the power. Uh, the lights never seem to really have a problem, and then sometimes it just goes at random. Um, yeah. So if anyone's uh, anyone's got any thoughts on that, I have been wondering whether we should replace it for a hundred milliamp. Um, uh, RCD. Um, my reasoning behind that is that we've got a uh, the outbuildings are actually quite far apart, so um, I'm wondering whether there's there's earth leakage. I'm not 100% sure how exactly that works, and whether having lots of long cables all over the place um, makes that more likely to happen. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's probably the we've had wet weather as well recently, which might be a factor. Um, but yeah, if anyone knows. Then, uh, then we'd love to, <laughs> we'd love to have some ideas because it's starting to drive us completely batty, and I can't do any work. You know, I don't want to turn. I can work on my laptop, but I don't want to turn on my computer if the internet is going to go down. If I'm uploading videos to YouTube, the power goes down, the internet goes, and I can't. You know, it bums out of the upload. Anyway, so we're making do with that. Uh, the other thing I've got a few comments recently about the audio on the videos. Uh, mainly the voiceover audio, which is too quiet. Now, what I'm doing is I'm recording that on my Behringer C C1U, which is a USB, like a, a low, low cost. I mean, it cost about sixty or seventy quid um, condenser microphone. Uh, I've had a chat with Carl about that, who obviously does the sound stuff as his job, and uh, we've put together some uh, uh, what do you call them, like audio filters on the on the recording inside Adobe Premiere that makes it a little bit better. Um, when I'm recording in the living room, as you'll probably hear in uh, the day 15 intro, uh, I get a lot of 50 hertz hum, uh, mainly because we've got the oven, we've got the fish tanks and everything going in here. Out in the studio, which is designed to be a bit quieter, it's uh, it should be a bit better. So hopefully that fixes it. I'd like, if, uh, if anyone could, if anyone has any problems with the audio, I'd love to know, because that's actually like a, you know, it's, it's a bit crap. If, I, if I'm doing videos and nobody can hear what I'm saying, then that's that's not really helping anyone. Right, we're back out in the poly tunnel, uh, and the first thing I want to do is get the rest of the gravel into this raised bed. Uh, and actually, when we go back inside, we'll check the propagator to make sure everything's looking good. But actually, let's have a look at the other plants. So if we come round to grow bed number one. got the uh, the kale here starting to get multiple leaves and this seems to be going really slow I think it's because of the temperature uh, pak choy is interesting that's uh, very pale I think you can easily see that uh, and then the cabbages are starting to get like their proper leaves now And then the potatoes, we've got little bits of green. But just picking picking the weeds out of these is nice, nice and easy. You just go in and just grab the tops off every time they appear. Uh, so that's uh, it's a nice time saving thing. 
Okay. So then the other thing I need to do is get the rest of that cocoa core into bags. I've already got some bags of it, so I'm going to start stacking those. I'll probably have a bit of a clean up as well. So row one, two, four is pak choy. Row five is perpetual cabbage, which is a, a plant that was gifted to me by a, a redditor. Uh, and it's basically like a kind of a five or six foot tall, big cabbage-like thing, which is a good cabbage substitute apparently. And then six to eight are carrots, which are going to go into the bed we made today. Okay, so that's that. Uh, that was just the one more bag. And that's, uh, the gravel is just about level with the surface of the water. And what we'll do is we'll, when we go out to place a bag, dig away the pebbles to the depth that we want for the bag, and then drop the bag in. Right, so I've got most of the soil out of this. It's in these bags. Uh, I've just cut off the uh, sheet where it was taped around the pipe. I'm just going to pull the whole pipe out. So I'm probably not going to be able to do that. Let me have a look. Uh, Okay, so I've got the liner and any remaining little bits of soil and stuff pulled out and I'll stick that on the little compost pile there for a sec. Uh, so here's the bed without its uh, liner. I'm just going to put some little tack nails in the corners here just to hold the, uh, the boards in place so I notice those had fallen off. Okay, so I'm going to do that. and. Uh, we're going to continue. Okay, so we're going to tape up these. Just using a bit of the rubber tape just to make a seal around them. I don't know why these didn't come with O-rings. Usually they would have like an O-ring around there, but they don't. So what we're doing is we're using this to make a temporary O-ring. Or well, a permanent O-ring, really. So it seems to have worked quite well so far. I just like to pre-stretch the, uh, the first little bit just to get it started and it, it helps warm up the tape as well so start in. I'm not going to pull this too tight because uh, what's going to happen is we're going to screw the bit on and that's going to hold tape down and create like a stronger seal going to press the press the tape together like that and uh, seal it in. I'm just holding it there for a second so it starts to glue and then this won't stick to the plastic but it will stick to itself. So tighten that down just leave it to set for a bit and I'll do the next one. So now the first one we did had a minute to set up. You can see that's got a nice surface around the inside there. Okay, so we're going to use the same process we used on the other two beds. We're going to put in a new liner. We're going to clean it down with the, the cleaner and 
then we're going to very carefully cut through just slightly smaller than the inner diameter here uh, and then push the liner down over the top and then screw it closed to seal it and the pipe's going to go through the through the middle now I've got a couple of ideas for this um, I can't uh, I can't remember what youtuber suggested it um, but in his system he's got like a, an, in, an inlet and an outlet and then stones across the bottom so I think we're going to do a, a similar idea to that which will probably mean I'll cut the pipe in half and as you can see that's central and this one's offset due to the uh, there's actually <laughs> screws in the middle so I broke my uh, my hole saw, saw in that one and I decided to saw the second one offset but that'll mean we'll have a pipe running there and then a pipe running there and then shingle in between and then that will filter the stones, uh, filter the, the water even further. Okay, so we're about ready to do the, the next bit. I'm going to put the pipe back through the bed. Uh, I'm going to add the uh, new bits on each end so that it seals up properly. Uh, and then we're going to put the pond liner through. I think that's the order I'm going to do it in. So let's do that. Okay, I'm realising this isn't going to work quite the way I wanted it to work. What I need to do is cut the pipe as it comes into the box, fit one of these, as you can see the pipe goes through, fit one of these to the end of the pipe, do the same on the other end, seal these in with the, uh, the liner, and then what we need to do is take the pipe, the middle bit that we've cut out, and then put it back in and push it into these holes. Right, so here we go. I've taken the fitting off this end, and so then when we put, we'll put this on the liner and push it through, and then we'll fit to this end. I'm going to do exactly the same at the far end. Okay, so I've got the liner just rolled out. I'm going to cut this oversized, and it's easily wide enough to do like two of these. So I'm going to cut it off here, cut it along so that I've got enough to do that and then I'll have another one, enough to do like maybe one of these or two of these. So uh, I'm going to have some uh, extra stuff to keep here. Okay, so this is the liner I've got left after I trimmed it. This is the main sheet and that's the spare bit. It's, uh, it's quite stiff, it's quite difficult to roll back up into a thing. Uh, and then this is the liner that I've got and the way I cut this was I put some staples tacked in each corner, put it down through the trough and then cut out with about an extra foot to go. So I'm going to go and get that roughly placed into the trough now. Okay, so there it is, the obviously wicking beds. It's starting to look, uh, look like how I imagined it. So we've got a little bit of light left, I'm going to go and turn the lights, overhead lights on in a minute. Uh, We'll get the perforated pipe back in there. Yeah. So actually there's quite a bit of a... Uh, there's probably about two feet of, uh, of overlap there, so I could have cut it a bit smaller. But, yeah. The uh, pipe's going through like that. So hopefully this one won't leak. Oh. Yeah. So what I'll probably do is I'll fill it up with water rather than stones first, just to make sure it actually uh, works the way you think it does. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it in the low light. Got the uh, the lights on, but we've got water coming out of the main system. It's the sort of rate it's going to be flowing through, and. Uh, at the moment I've just got this snorkel thing on here. What's actually going to go on the end of this eventually is a uh, a little manifold with two 20mm uh, pipes to come out to each of these. Uh, but for the time being I've just got this on there just to, so it didn't have an end stop. Okay, so hopefully we're going to see how this uh, this goes. Now what's interesting is the overflow here hasn't caught up, so you'll see the white U-bend there, it's 
actually sucking water out of uh, out of these two at the moment. And there was a little bit of sediment that came through, like that, but not as much as I thought it would be. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. This was uh, the day 16, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the day 16 update video. Uh, we've done quite a bit of work in the poly tunnel. It's probably going to be quite a long video in the end. So apologies if it's too long. Feel free to skip around. But yeah, we've got one bed finished. We've got one bed on its way finished. And uh, I'm going to end it here. So, yep, if you like the video, please leave a like. Uh, if you've got any questions, ask a question. And I'll see you tomorrow.